The scientists are definitely storytellers. When I was in high school, I basically was of the opinion that uh, probably the best um, possible opportunity for me after I got my degree was to be in journalism and I was really interested in print journalism. There's a lot more similarity between what we do as scientists and what we do as people who do creative uh, artistic work uh, than meets the eye. One of the great things about humanities, any kind of expressive humanities, the languages, English, journalism, any of these uh, sorts of fields gives you an opportunity to really uh, think about how we effectively communicate uh, what we do regardless of our field and so I think for scientists that's extremely important because our very livelihoods depend on it. When you go out into the field there's a great deal of collection of data and at the same time as you're collecting data ruminating on how to build a story out of that. I mean in many ways sciences are, are really a lot about uh, trying to create a whole series of plausible stories and then we try to reduce the uncertainty associated with those different stories and really get to as close as we can to what the real story was. And even today, when I try to encourage my, my students to learn how to effectively write uh, for scientific journals and things like that, I ask them to uh, emulate papers that other people have written and really read those papers as they would read literature, not read them simply for the scientific content, but for how the story is built and how the material is provided uh, in that document. And then I challenge them to write things as a narrative. I, you know, I say, you know, you could do much worse uh, as a scientific writer than to write a scientific paper as Ernest Hemingway would have written a scientific paper. It's, it's an interesting uh, thing that that you can you can think of a problem that's a scientific problem, but ask questions like. How do I approach this? How do I relate this to whatever the readership is going to be? And the next thing you know, you begin asking yourself questions. You know, what do I know from my background? What do I know from the classes I've taught? What do I know from the things that I pick up in my continuing education as a human being? And I find that quite frequently, things that I read, things that I see, um, have a, a, things that I talk about in casual conversation that have nothing to do with science at all have a profound effect in the way I think about science and the way I do my work.